<laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to the Edmunds Racing Preview Show. We're back here at the Glass House underneath the perch to do it all again and well done fellas, another winning week. I am Voodoo, got the chocolates, back to back wins and mm. it was a pretty uh, brave performance from the horse and the rider. Oh, the rider especially. <laughs> Horse is fairly brave. Yeah. Didn't think, I didn't think Callow had that in him, but he, <laughs> he squeezed up. Drove and he, through. There wasn't much room, and he, he yeah. punched it through. No, well done. Um, he's, he's he, really, uh, since we had a little discussion a few weeks ago, he's been... A little team meeting. He's been very professional and, and ridden ridden well. So, ridden accordingly. You know, I can't you know, have the utmost praise for him for that. You know, he's done, done a great job. Yep. And, um, you know... Continues to ride well here, and and um, like he, I think he rode a winner in town midweek last week as well. So, you know, he's he's obviously a top class jockey, just um, probably in the twilight of his career. So, and he's happy to do what he's doing. Yeah, but the horse is brave too. Obviously, there wasn't much of a gap there, but took it and um, charged yeah, through. Big, big weight again, yeah. yeah. Mm. Sixty kilos to be able to do that. Built yeah. a good record. Even it's on the poly, so when we have to take him, he's probably getting to the point now where we've got to take him to a turf track somewhere because he's rating. Yeah. But um, that is what it is. I don't no, think it'll no, matter that no, Yeah, no worries about that. Mm. Um, he was good, and give him a whacking the other day for a small horse with a big weight like that. It was a very good effort. So um, I said building a good record, five starts this prep on mm. the poly for three seconds and two wins. Sweet as, all good, and he's going really well. Mm. An early nominee for the um, horse, of the, horse of the Year for the next season, maybe. You reckon? He'll, he'll, get, he'll get the points well, score for sure. record. He'll yeah, get the points the score. Three yeah. seconds and, and two wins. That's, That's right. What, Ten plus. <laughs> it's all over. He's doing the math. <laughs> <laughs> no, good effort, uh, I am Voodoo and Mr. Callow. Yeah, and um, that'll work. <laughs> what? The maths or? Well, the math has to work, but I'm not sure whether the... <laughs> the points score, no, well, he'd yeah. be home already. Yeah. Something he'd have to run 14 <laughs> times here to beat his... To beat his uh, Point score tally. Yep. Anyway, no, it's good we'll effort. So uh, well done to everyone involved, involved there in the Sedgen Hay Colours. Uh, unfortunately, mm. your best bet, the other part of it, was Boca Riva, and um, things didn't go to plan there. But um, all good. Horses all good. No, the horse is okay. She um, look, she did run around for quite a bit after after the race. They had a bit of trouble catching us. So she pro probably did a little bit more than than we wanted. We did nominate her for this week, but we just decided sort of back end of the week whether we after that happening just give a another week to get over it and we'll run her in the pink ribbon day here next Saturday I think it is yep pink ribbon 16th, cup it's two, it. two races for either the pink ribbon um, cup for the fillies and mares or class 1 1200 or something but there Have is two races we won the pink ribbon cup yeah yeah young fun when it was this was before it was a big day that was a, another session no horse funnily enough before it was a big metro meeting mm. I think it was like a class 4 1100 at the time for all comers not just a fillies and mares race so that was nearly 10 years ago so we have won it once young fun had, had a couple of cracks with Mimi Lagarde, the Pines, a fair few fillies, but we just haven't been able to nab it since it's been a Saturday race. And obviously next year back on the turf uh, here, It'll be big, we'll be trying day again. Day. It will be big, yeah. So, All right, and some exciting times during the week. You, uh, The next generation's coming through, the two-year-olds, yeah. and th there were some jump-outs here. A couple, um, couple of babies jumped out, yeah. Yeah, and the star turn Divergence, who there actually are some ownership opportunities, um, sort of caught the eye in, in his jump-out. Yeah, we've still got... Um, so we've teamed up with my runners 50-50 um, for that one. We've actually still got 45% to go in him. Um, yeah, right. He has a 140 grand purchase, plus GST, plus um, you know race nomination and, and, and the like. So I'm not sure of the actual number, but it's it's north of north of 140 now. Um, but yeah, 45% of him to go. And he, well, you're going to put the, the footage yeah, up we'll so the footage, you know, yeah. people can make up their own mind, but... Um, I liked, I liked what I saw. Uh, he he began began very cleanly. Um, there's only three in the jump. Just his professionalism yeah, was, two, was really yeah, good. The other first, two, first the other two were quite green, so it's a little bit hard to um, to get a god on on his actual ability. But Scott Galloway gave him two two bangs around the bum, and he just took off mm. and had to actually restrain him back to the other one. So he actually had a partner, and or you know, sort of more more so to help the other other horse get get around this bottom turn to be fair um, but you know star turns precocious he had a big brown mare um, the family's quite good and and um, he looks like a runner to me yeah you were saying that, you know even before the jump out you yeah. think he could be an early runner and you're talking even potentially you know trying to wait if all goes to plan trying to qualify for the for the millions as, as a, oh, well, as a that's goal our, that's our aim with all these young ones yeah. you know they're all magic me and all these ones are magic me and so we're trying to 
you know, get them through the system and hopefully they can, but, you know, doesn't normally always happen. But, you know, it's only been maybe last last year's two year race we hadn't had a runner in for quite we had a runner five or six years. Jeff, every year for about five years for five, a period five, there. Five, six years. We were fortunate enough to win it in 2017 mm -hmm. with Hootson. Next year was Wisdom of Water ran fourth. Should have nearly won. Wisdom of Water and Alpine Edge. And Alpine both, Edge ran second. So, very mm -hmm. close you know, well. our record's pretty good in that race and trained here back on the grass, hopefully, um, you know, late in the year. Should be good. Yeah, okay. to... yeah, you know what a two-year-old looks like and, and this guy's going oh, yeah, in well, the right um, direction anyway. And we've got a, you know, a couple more than that too, by the way. So... Um, um, we've got some nice, nice young ones coming through. Okay, so inquiries at Edmunds Racing for yes, anyone that's interested? Like. Yep. All right, we'll throw that email address up on the screen. Um, okay, well, let's get into the preview. Uh, you guys have to head to a trainers meeting this morning. So Preach flies the flag at Doombin on Saturday. No favours from the Barrier Gods, gate 17, but we'll come in a couple, I think, with scratchings. Yep. Yeah, one uh, from the outside. Yeah. <laughs> I think it is. Yes. What's new? <laughs> There's metro, two. Metro, metro, meet, up, metro meeting and we draw... You know what? He, 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 Absolutely. For him, like, there's a lot of speed in this race, unfortunately. You know, but if for him to, he needs to draw sort of not wide, wide, but you know, middle of field would have been would have been better because he does step away a tad slow, and then he he takes about 40, 50 metres to actually muster and get into gear. So you know, if you have got a faster horse, if, if you're drawn softly, if you have got a faster horse or a better beginner, they actually beat him to his spot. And all of a sudden you're in, you're, you know, you're backing behind him where this horse just needs to roll. He's had a wind, wind off and, and um, he's got some wind issues, so he doesn't need much pulling about or trying to restrain. He's a free rolling horse and, and from that barrier I'll get that opportunity with 50 kilos. Yep, so CJ Graham just CJ's go. riding well. Very professional girl, never had much to do with her. I know her dad. Her dad was... Um, uh, top rider in the on the mid north coast of New South Wales, so um, CJ's uh, got a good good jockey's pedigree, and she's doing a good job. You know, she's apprenticed to Kelly Sweeter. She rode a, um, proud of Augusta. What was that thing she won on on Wednesday? Yeah, yeah, of course. The thing of Kelly's, Clovis Prince. Yeah, and she's she's riding well. So, 50 kilos, bang him, bang him out, straight up on speed, and see what happens. Okay, hopefully he gives the team a sight on Saturday in mm -hmm. town. Um, Gold Coast Saturday. Uh, three runners or acceptors here. So sweet, so sweet. Looks well placed in a cutest... They call it Sue Sweet. Sue Sweet. Yeah, I don't know how that it's works. The it's extra just so o. sweet. It's the extra O. <laughs> yeah, well... Sue, so, anyway, whatever. But looks well placed. Dropping back from midweek Metro and good race for um, for So Sweet. Yeah, good prize money race too, being cutest and cutest filly. Um, she, she gets a double thing, doesn't she? She gets a double whammy, yeah. yeah. So it just looks like a perfect race for her. She's drawn nicely. Um... Callow on board has taken improvement from her first up run, which she was always going to. And she was, obviously, Golan's horse that day was too good for them, but she gave a bit of a kick and then the last furlong got a bit tired. I don't think she'll be doing that tomorrow. And um, I think it's fair to say we'd be both disappointed if she didn't knock them over. Yeah. Mm. That's all I can add to that, Jack. Yeah, so prices sweet. aren't out yet, so but I'm sweet. tipping uh, could be a little short. Uh, yeah. yeah, probably will be. But yeah. anyway, good chance. So uh, good luck to everyone involved there in the Archer Park Colours. Uh, Mission to Win and Golden Glamorous both entered for the Maiden Handicap over the 1,200. Yep. Both drawn wide. Anyway, we'll great, play on. Yep. Uh, Mission to Win, knocking on the door three seconds in a row. And um, Goldie was scratched at the Barry's last start at, at Bow Desert. Yeah, um... So, Mission to Win, obviously, uh, looks looks a nice race for him. Golden Glamorous um, hasn't sort of performed to the way I would have liked most of this preparation, but she did gallop well Tuesday morning, probably the best bit, bit of work I've seen her do for all this prep, I think. So, um, Scott Galloway galloped in and thought she went up nicely. Um, from her barrier, we'll bang her forward. He would he would go back a bit, um, and he'll, ch he'll chime in like... You know, you'd nearly think... I think we can only run one, two. I was going to say, he's sounding you know, uh, you know, can only run one, two. She'll, she'll, look, she'll look the winner for quite a while, quite a way, I think, and he, he will, he'll be strong through the line. He's dropping back from 1350, obviously. He had two runs sort of at 1300, 1350, back to 1200, and, and I think um, tomorrow's his day. OK, all right, and a little possible quen quinella push there, so, yes. which dovetails into... Best bets. Trent, he's kicked clear. He got a collect with Princess Grace in the feature, um, was it, the uh, Memsey? I give a cheer too. Anyway, yeah, it was a good was, run. It was pretty brave, but uh, 
Mr. Oh, Brightside. I think Mr. Brightside's free wide was yeah, very tough. Darn good. Didn't um, it run third, did it? Princess Crash ran second and second. Uh, I bet so you went. Um, yeah, you wish I was. Oh, oh, he ran yep. third. It was a head bobber. And then you you played it safe with Iron Voodoo. Solely, but anyway, the, the any price which is clear. So six forty-five plus for you and Toby. Unfortunately, you, you left it all in the bag last week because you went the Boca Riva, who was scratched at the barriers. Or sorry, no, after they jumped. Doesn't count. You know that. <laughs> All right. So my I ran into I wish I win. I think wish I win. The, the that let me down. Yes. Yeah. 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 And then the multi as well. So. The multi. So oh, you're right. protesting. Okay. You, uh, I am. You're saying you get your money back for the. We the, should do. Yeah, the punters should get their money back. I ran in there trying to get a run of it. No such no, luck. Didn't do it, so. <laughs> Even though she was clear to start, are you saying you get oh, your money yeah, back? Just ditch her. <laughs> okay, what are we going to uh, go with this, this week? week? We've given well, a couple of push. Well, I'm, I'm getting a bit behind, so I'm going to have to go, go, um, sort of. Exotic. Exotic again. <laughs> so I'm going. I don't know how these line up, but I'm going. Um, so sweet. So sweet, yeah. Yeah. Into That's one mission to win. Mission to win. I think we'll both do that. Hang um, on, hang on. He hasn't to, finished yet. To add some value. <laughs> Each way pre preach. I'm not sure how they measure. Off. That's all. Okay. Okay. Three way all up. So win win each way. Each or yeah. All right. Win win place. All right. Geez, the calculator will be working overtime there for that one. And what about I'll, you, I'll sir? I'll just all up the two here. Mission to win and so sweet. He, he's, he's just got a great he's, he's, he's just great he's just got a. Show have a crack mission to win. He shouldn't shouldn't be in a maiden. He should have won He's at Rockhampton about door, hasn't two yeah. months ago. God. But anyway, um, maybe Saturday will be his day. Okay. All right. All right. Have we got any around the grounds or what? Yeah, are we... well, yeah. You're going to go around the grounds as well. Oh, well what yeah. race did you pick? Well, we'll go to Melbourne. I think the McEwen's the logical race. Um, Run to the roses in Sydney's a bit. How are you going? Um, I think you know we've got some good representation. Queensland representation in the the Middies McEwen, where we ran second one year to, to uh, Nature Strip, beating a pimple. pimple. Um, so I'm going to go Giga Kick. Do you reckon is that too brave? short for it? Is that brave? Dollar ninety, Giga Kick. It's not very brave. It's obvious, but do you, a thousand meters might be too, too yeah, sharp. Just, yeah, they might be too sharp. We'll be finishing on. Though. I reckon. Um, I reckon. Small field won't be too far off, and though, will he? Rothfire oh, and what's his name go at it. Will, and, will they really though? And he'll peel Zoo off style and Rothfire will go hard and, and yeah. give a kick. Okay. Zoo style is twelve dollars. Rothfire Rothfire is five dollars. They'll lead and cut each other's throat and giga kick will go boom. Okay. Back. I've got the speed map. I've got okay. My around the grounds. The run to the rose. Yep. I watched an exhibition gallop a couple of weeks ago. Two-time juvenile Group One winner, Militarise. Yep. Even though it's got aimed maybe the Caulfield, Caulfield Guineas and the cool. Golden Rose Cox Plate and whatever, it's a done deal. First up, yep. Chris Waller, Zach Lloyd. I just thought that gallop with Shinzo, um, the exhibition gallop the other day was outstanding. McAvoy rode Militarise and was absolutely swinging. So okay. Zach Lloyd's in good form, uh, riding the old apprentice, riding absolutely super, and um, he'll be trying his guts out to get a Group winner for for that team so I think Militarise is my play for around the grounds even though it's first up I think can run a bottle of fresh at $16 yep each way you yep. going no I'm going on the blurt off boom yep that's well there you go very All right. confident uh, I like it it's a fair push yeah. you've done your research you've done your video form off the exhibition what's the exhibition talk about <laughs> three minutes earlier I've done a lot of research alright nah. before we go topic of the week what Trainers hours. Oh, let's, yeah. let's chat about that. One of um, everyone's favourite topics. We better make it quick. But in, yeah. yeah, we will make it quick. Uh, in Sydney this week, obviously that, that's why we're talking about it. That um, elected to have a later start, what pushing time's it back. Uh, What's well, different in different clubs, isn't it? But five o'clock from... Warwick Farm, five o'clock Randwick, and five thirty for Rose Hill, which was forty-five minutes later than what they were going. They were four forty-five. Okay, and here it's obviously four o'clock, and I think uh, four forty-five here's... minutes. Would it? They would have been four fifteen. If you say five o'clock? No. Rose Hill was four forty five, gone to five thirty. Five thirty. Oh, They've gone a different time. Yep. Okay. But anyway, what what are we why, thinking? Why so? the difference? What's what's that go? Who knows? But anyway, that what is. What are we what thinking? Is. Oh look, they've bought, they've been talking about this for quite some time. It's I think it's gonna be a bit difficult. Um really, yeah. You know, you you know, you sometimes like if we got a runner at Grafton or something or or wherever you know, they leave at seven. We've got, got to be off to the races, sort of um, yep. pretty early. So that there's all that to it. It's been a 
bit of a way of life for everyone for ever since ever since you become a trainer or aspire to be a, a trainer, sort of early mornings and get it over and done with as quick as you can. The climate here is an issue in the summer. That's right. Okay, so if we start mm. decide we're going to be starting at five or six o'clock, it's 30 degrees by then, and 30 degrees doesn't 30 sound degrees much, but it's, it's the humidity. Yeah. You know? Yep. Um, so and go further north and it's still uh, it's an yeah. issue there too. Yeah. Um, and we're of daylight at 4 a.m. here. Yeah. You know, um, in summer. So I think different different areas are going to have to... If they're going to go down that path, they're going to have to firstly work towards the climate, what suits the horse. You know, the welfare of the horses is the, is the main thing. Mm. And they say they race on, they do race out in the, you know, in the heat of the day, but that's once. That's you know, only one every exertion day. every couple it's of weeks. Not, yes, not, true. Not, not every day. So I think Queensland's a little different to New South Wales and Victoria. I think Victoria probably can afford to open later than that as well, um, just because of the... It doesn't get daylight down there till nearly, nearly, nearly light, seven a.m. and it's it's you know the climate's pretty good. Mm. Sorry, I don't mean it's good. It's it's a little bit more temperate than yeah. here. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Okay, so you'd be happy for it to stay. And what about you, sir? Splinters. Um, pros and, splinters. Pros and cons. While you're sitting he's, on the he's fence. On the fence. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there's a pros and cons for all. Yeah. I mean, as Dad just said, do you? Put the track time back an hour, and, and is an hour enough? Mm, is it doesn't like, do much to make a difference? What's the still point? One, one hour, you're still getting up early anyway. Well, so I will Staff instead still of get there, still got to get there. Still got to get there earlier. So anyway. yeah. I think you would find so that people would still get up early, do all of their pre-work for, you know, the box mucking out and whatever else have you, yeah, and then do all the uh, track work after that. So they'd still be getting there early. Um, then you've got the problem of track work riders that have second jobs it's just such a long-winded there's no perfect there's answer in my opinion to it, yeah. track work riders that have second jobs that only ride track work they're, they're part-time or casual whatever you want to call them mm. they work from four till seven then they go off and do whatever do another job will that entice them starting one hour later because they'll lose out on their second line second of work income. yeah will that entice them to work in the industry full-time and, and have to come back for afternoons and and race days and whatever i don't think so mm. um no and because, then you've got to no, go because they can earn just as much money in t in two or three hours here and then they go and work a full-time job that's, where, that's... where where they've got to work actually eight hours a day and they 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 may get less than they they would get here for their two or three hours a day mm. that's exactly right so and you know actually you know track riders are actually pretty well pretty well i think anyway because they get well they work 21 so, hours a week three six three. 18, 18 to 20 hours a week roughly and they're getting, they're getting paid pretty well. Yeah. But the, the track, yeah, so there's no, in my opinion, no perfect answer. Um, yeah, it sounds good in theory, but then getting off to the races and whatever, um, those winter carnival races start at 10.45, 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock. You know. Some have got to um, be there three hours before. Mm. Some of them have got to be there three hours before. So that means you're leaving at 6.30 to the races, a horse leaving at 6.30 to go to Brisbane to the races. You're starting track work at five o'clock. It's impossible. Yeah. Yep. So, and yeah. The, so what do you mean? It's what, a, it's what, tra mean, it's what track means by that? You know, mo most horses that race do do go out and have a stretch up. Yeah. Come back in and have a shampoo and and, and the like. So, but if the track's not opening until five, where they where they're normally home home, their first horses we work, which is four a.m. or three forty-five. Yep. Um, they've they're already home. In it's their box, relaxing at four thirty. Yep. You know, it's not England. We don't go. have all day. If they don't start till five, next yep. thing mm. they're not they're not in the on in their box till five thirty, quarter six. Yeah. And they're leaving for the race in an hour an hour after that. So. Yep. Um, there's, there's, a, there's, a bit, there's a bit. There's a bit. There's a bit to it. Yeah. Bit to it. Bit for it. Yeah. Bit against it. Mm. But, you um, push race times back, and then it just it creates the same problem that they're getting home. Staff are getting home later anyway because you've had to push the race times back to get yeah. the morning work done. There's no perfect answer. Um, we could argue about it for years to come. Yeah, well, I guess we'll see how the Sydney experiment goes and, uh, and no doubt there'll be more more talk about it. Will it attract more staff? Personally, I don't think so. Um, you know, it's a is it a pay issue? Probably. I don't know what that is. But, um, you know, I think it's the welfare of the... I think they're trying to look out for the welfare of maybe staff and... Staff, yeah. And, and everyone, so... Yep, yep. Is what it is. Trying to move with the times. All right, well, we, uh, we go. better go because That's you've got a trainer's meeting and no doubt this uh, topic might even be raised there. So uh, 
Thanks for the insights. Have a great weekend, everyone. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs>